follow your arrow wherever it points. So what's so hard about following your life's purpose anyway? Like with all the information that we have about well-being, psychology, mental health, and the vast selection of experiences and careers we can choose from today, you'd think that all you would have to do is just follow your arrow wherever it points. But one thing is for certain. If you fail to discover what your purpose is, that might result in some pretty long-term dissatisfaction. You might lack inner peace, and you might not have a sense at all of being fully in sync with your internal self. And that brings me to Sunday dinner. One Sunday, uh, my family and I were making dinner together, and my daughter said that she would be the one in charge of the music that night. Uh, she chose to play music from Casey Musgraves a wonderful award-winning singer-songwriter that you might say is in the country music genre, but regardless of what her pigeonhole might be, I was immediately just gobsmacked by Casey's brilliance, by her talent. And needless to say, I became an immediate fan of Casey Musgraves. But one song of hers really stood out that evening. It was her song, Follow Your Arrow Wherever It Points. And that got me wondering, how do you figure out where to point your arrow? You know, I've been leaning into the teachings of Buddhism over the past few years. It's been a helpful and meaningful way for me to kind of wrap my head around all the craziness of COVID, Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian Hate, vaccine debates, etc., etc. It really has been a lot, hasn't it? But one of the Buddhist teachings that resonates with me strongly is related to Casey Musgrave's song, Follow Your Arrow Wherever It Points. And one of Buddhism's most treasured monks, or teachers really, Thich Nhat Hanh, teaches an important lesson about following your arrow. And the one thing that I hadn't considered is that true joy comes from pointing your arrow in a direction that is guaranteed to provide joy. It's the arrow that points inward, inward. Thich Nhat Hanh explains this beautifully in one of his lessons. The lesson is called, The Way Out Is In. Now, the only way that I can describe how this lesson is so profound is from my own personal experience. You see, during that pandemic, I found myself in a pit of problems. Not only was I staying at home, uh, doing my part to stay safe and to keep everybody else safe, but I was also really getting wrapped up in so many other problems that were going on in the world. It had such a powerful effect on me that I ended up in the hospital under observation. I was so absorbed by so many things that I couldn't control. Uh, things like the George Floyd Black Lives Matter situation. That, that triggered a post-traumatic incident for me that uh, required medical attention. Uh, I was wrapped up in Stop Asian Hate and the vaccination anti-vax battle. And I also found myself doing a lot of doom scrolling, which was really screwing up with my head. I wondered to myself, when is all of this shit going to end? But thankfully, with help from my family and my therapist, I was able to dig myself out of a deep hole of depression. It was a deep hole. But I realized something really important. I had dug that hole myself. And I did it by not following my arrow. Like everybody else, my arrow was spinning out of control. I didn't know where it was pointing. I didn't know how to point it. And that's when I started just meditating more, reading more about Buddhism, and doing more about my own personal mental health. And then, as if by magic, that's where Thich Nhat Hanh's lesson showed up. He said, the way out is in. Go back to oneself and take care of oneself. Learn how to create a feeling of joy. Learn how to handle a painful feeling. Listening to the suffering allows understanding and compassion to be born and suffer less. Thanks to that lesson, I began to look inward to learn about my own suffering. I pointed my arrow in. I learned how to go back to myself to find joy and happiness. I learned how to deal with painful feelings by just being compassionate about what I was suffering for. And yes, there were a lot of things happening in the world. And yes, there were a ton of challenges that me and the rest of the world were facing but by just simply pointing my arrow inward, I was paying attention to my feelings, seeing that they were painful, and I held my feelings like a child with compassion and love. 
and the result was wisdom. After a bit of time, I noticed something else about my arrow too. By pointing my arrow inward, it resulted in so much more compassion for others. I was so much more peaceful. I was content. I felt inspired on a daily basis. And my family started to see a difference in me. I became mindful of the moments where I was uneasy or sad or mad or anxious. And I just noticed those moments when they happened. I didn't judge them. I just noticed them. I began to realize that every moment that I focused on my arrow pointing in, a billion arrows radiated out of me and went out into the world to affect it in a positive way. I appreciate moments more. New opportunities began to show up for me. My family began to notice some really big changes in me as well. Even my dogs noticed the change in me. They started coming to me to lay down beside me. Casey Musgraves is a pretty wise, talented young woman. Follow your arrow wherever it points. But if you really want to experience true happiness, point your arrow in. Thich Nhat Hanh taught us that the only way out is in.